So you were told you have high cholesterol. What are you going to do now? Are you going to take that statin? Well, we're going to talk about that and let's talk about why cholesterol is good for you and when to consider taking a statin. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Dr. Andrea O'Connor with Vitalize Health Partners, where my partner and I, uh, health coach Aaron, are trying to educate you to live your healthiest life. So thanks for being here. Well, so you were told you have high cholesterol, and your doctor's all upset. You went home. You told your family, what am I going to do about this high cholesterol? Well, Let's remind us all why cholesterol is not a bad thing. Cholesterol is absolutely necessary, and I, it has gotten such a bad rap lately. So we're going to go into that on this video, why cholesterol is good for you so you don't feel so bad. Okay. Cholesterol, of course, it builds the brain up, right? The brain cell has a layer around it called a phospholipid bilayer. A lot of that layer is made of cholesterol. That's right. Cholesterol creates fluidity in cells so they don't get rigid and hard. And what that means is nutrients and explaining it simply can get into the brain cell and they can get out of the brain cell. Very important for healthy brain function to have plenty of cholesterol on board to be able to do that. And that's why a lot of patients, when they're put on prescription medications, they start complaining of brain fog. Um, some family members have witnessed patients getting dementia being on them. And so it's really important to understand this before you start your medication or have another conversation with your doctor about this if they understand cholesterol. Cholesterol is also the precursor to many important hormones. Yeah, especially for those of us women in perimenopause or many menopause, or even men, men hit a hormonal wall. It's called andropause. Yeah, men go through that too. Cholesterol makes, right? It makes pregnenolone, which then makes estrogen, testosterone, uh, the adrenal gland hormones like cortisol. These are hormones essential for human function, right? And even DHEA, yeah, it regulates um, how your immune system works, your stress responses, you know, how well you're aging. Yeah, that's a thing as well too. And if you've ever heard of patients getting on statins and all of a sudden they'll cl complain about every muscle in their body is just hurting, they're sore, they just can't be on this medication anymore. Well, yeah, because those medications, the prescription form of statin, and even the natural form, believe it or not, nature makes a statin as well. It's called red rice yeast. That's a statin as well. But it, it in a simple way of explaining it, it depletes CoQ10, which is a great supplement for helping with cardiac function and energy, and, and it does so many things. Well, it depletes CoQ10 when you're on a statin, and that can lead to the muscle pain, the fatigue, and the cramping. And so when you're on a statin, you definitely want to talk to your doctor about why it's important to also be on CoQ10. So cholesterol also makes bile. Yeah, you know what bile does, right? So what do you think your gallbladder does? It sits right there under your liver. It's your liver's little buddy. But guess what? Its job is to hold on to, store, and release bile. So anytime you eat something, in particular, um, dietary fats and fat-soluble vitamins, your and, – and even – well, I'll get into what fiber does. But when you eat those, you need to emulsify or break down those fats so you're gallbladder releases a little bit of bile, which helps break down those fats. Now, how does the bile get there? Well, in the liver, bile is produced with the um, ingredient of cholesterol. Yeah, that's right. So that's how your fat is emulsified. And that's how we absorb vitamins like A, D, E, and K, because those are fat-soluble vitamins that need uh help with digestion through bile acids. And so without enough cholesterol, you're not doing that. Now, what about the people that get their gallbladder removed, right? Well, yes, they end up having some issues with gas, bloating, a little bit of digestion issues. They can't eat fat like they used to. So they might have to start taking some dietary enzymes to help them break down that fat. So guess what? You know how I talk about how vitamin D3 and sitting in the sun is so important to get vitamin D? Yeah, cholesterol. Cholesterol helps synthesize vitamin D in the skin. 
Yeah, so when exposed to sunlight, there is a reaction that occurs with the involvement of cholesterol, sunlight, and the production of vitamin D. So what does vitamin D do? I say it all the time, supports immune function. Like, you know, when the, when you have a viral infection, you want a strong immune system. So you want plenty of vitamin D on board. But if you don't have enough cholesterol, may you not be synthesizing as much vitamin D. That's right. So now there's the healthy cholesterol, right? It's called HDL. You may see that on your blood work. We want that level to be above 40 or 45 because HDL basically acts as an antioxidant. It prevents oxidative damage uh, to uh, your body, reducing inflammation in blood cells. So, um, And then it's always known as LDL is the quote-unquote bad cholesterol, but you know, I'm just going to say that, you know, for thousands of years, we've had HDL and LDL as humans, and cholesterol has such an important role in the body. And when our cholesterol levels go too low, even that dreaded LDL, um, then we have, an, we have an issue like all those things I just went over now. Do you know that cholesterol even supports uh, bone homeostasis by influencing the activation of cells called osteoblasts. These are the cells that actually form bone. Yeah. And then we have bone resorbing cells called, called osteoclasts that um, help to break down bone. So cholesterol supports that as well. Isn't that amazing? So there's so many good things cholesterol does. So when you've been told by your doctor you have high cholesterol, I don't want you to get all upset. Just know like, oh, there could be a lot of healthy things going on with my body. Now, the issue is if cholesterol goes way too high, and I'm going to go into that on the next video about when to use statins uh, for cardiac risk. Thanks for being here at Vitalize Health Partners. See you on the next one.